Nick Saban, apparently, according to the new John Talty book that is coming out in August, he considered leaving Alabama for ESPN back in 2014. Now, this is an article from Ryan Glassbeagle over at the New York Post. And he goes through, he says, uh, Nick Saban had meetings in 2014 about potentially leaving Alabama to work for ESPN. That is according to the new book, uh, The Leadership Secrets of Nick Saban from AL.com senior sports editor John Talty. Those who have heard Saban castigate the media for propagating rat poison might be surprised to learn that the legendary college football coach, who is now 70, once considered joining the worldwide leader. Prior to the 2013 season, Saban met with Nick Kahn, who was then a sports media talent agent at CAA, who represented Kirk Herbstreet, Skip Bayless, Colin Cowherd, Mike Greenberg, and numerous others, Talty reports. Late into the season, however, Alabama's national championship aspirations ended with a devastating loss uh, to in-state rival Auburn. The game, often referred to as the kick six, saw Auburn's Chris Davis catch a short field goal attempt from Alabama kicker Adam Griffith, which he ran for a touchdown to put the Tigers up 34-28. to So, um, when the season ended, it says Saban is said to have empowered Khan to reach out to ESPN with a message that Saban was thinking about the next chapter in his career and is considering whether media should be a part of that. Now, here's the interesting part to me. After the 2013 season is when this happened. Very interesting, right? There was a lot. It, of course, you can read it in the book. You can go read this article, etc. cetera. Uh, my thought process on this is... Of course he reached out to ESPN. 2014, that season, is when the college football playoff started. So you were getting a whole new iteration of the sport at that point. You had just had the kick six happen. Uh, the offenses in college football were completely changing from what Saban was used to. You saw nonstop how much Gus Malzahn annoyed Nick Saban. Remember, 2013, that Iron Bowl game, yes, the kick six is one thing, but the reason we got to the kick six is because of the lineman downfield rule that just was basically blatantly ignored by referees for multiple teams that year. They were letting RPOs go crazy. Offenses were taking advantage of defenses. And remember, Nick Saban is a defensive guy. Heading into the 2014 season is when Nick Saban hired Lane Kiffin to revamp his offense. So does it make sense to me? Yes. So the question here, and I'm sure Auburn fans absolutely love this, is did Gus Malzahn almost make Nick Saban quit in 2014? That's the real question here. Imagine how much the sport, how much the history of the sport would be different if Nick Saban had decided to quit football and just go be a commentator, just go be on college game day or whatever after that 2013 season. He, he's won three more championships since then, 2015, 2017, and 2020. How different would things be for all of these programs in the SEC? Gus Malzahn would likely still have his job at Auburn. That's one thing. But if, if Saban had not gotten Lane Kiffin and empowered him to change over the offense in Tuscaloosa, if he hadn't decided that he still had some unfinished business, Right, because Saban wanted to go for that third national championship, and I'm sure that that was crushing. But, you know, you go and you check out ESPN, you see what's going on, do you want to be a part of this, etc. Yeah, he, he decided to stick around, and now here he is. Got a contract through 2029 in Tuscaloosa. He is 70 years old right now, heading into the 2022 season. He'll be 71 in October, if I'm not mistaken. I might be wrong about that. Regardless, somebody can tell me. Somebody jump in the comments. Let me know. Uh, if you hadn't already followed the channel, subscribe, whatever. Um, but yes, very interesting. Did Gus Malzahn almost make Nick Saban quit before the 2014 season? Something to think about. Something to think about for sure. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com. And if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.